alaikum everyone welcome back to the channel today's vlog is continuing from our second day in medina after visiting masjid kuba and kuba square which you can watch on my channel the previous vlog before this one we headed back to our hotel because my appointment to visit Riyadh al Jannah was at 9.30. So first things first, you need to book an appointment to visit Riyadh al Jannah. It can be booked on the Nusuk app. We had downloaded the app a few months before our trip and constantly kept checking when our dates would open. About two weeks before our trip, the dates that we were in Medina opened up. So keep in mind, to create an account on the Nusuk app, you need to have your Saudi visa as it requires your visa number to move forward. Uh, we applied as a visitor and it as for your visa number and your passport number so once you've made your account you can keep checking it for your preferred date to open up when you open the app to check dates this is how it looks so we were in medina from february 8 to 10 as you can see the red means that it was very busy and a lot of the time slots are booked green means that it is low crowd and not a lot of people have booked that time so we wanted to book our appointment on february 9 female time slots are from 8 30 p.m to 12 a.m in the night and the men's appointment are from 12 a.m. to Fajr time, I believe. Each time slot is for about 30 minutes. Once you select the time, read the instructions of visiting the Roda and then confirm. At the end of the whole process, it gives you a summary of your appointment time and details, plus a QR code that is flashing, meaning it's active. Now that you know how to use the Nusik app, let's go back to my appointment time. Carried a small backpack with me in which I carried my passport, copy of my visa, and I had also screenshotted my appointment details and QR code on my phone before leaving. So I had not bought a SIM because we were here for only a few days and we didn't think we needed it. I carried my passport and visa because I read on a few forums that they do check some sort of ID in case there is a problem. So better to be a little overprepared than underprepared, right? So I left the hotel and we are staying in Pullman Zamzam Hotel, which is about a two to three minute walk from the 302 gate of Masjid al Nabwi. When I was leaving, the kids weren't asleep yet and they were crying and my husband was trying to put them to sleep and we had also come back a bit late from Masjid Koba so overall I was running late. I would advise anyone who's coming for their appointment to arrive at least 30 minutes early. Um, I think I was running about 10 to 15 minutes to my appointment so I was rushing and in all of my rush I forgot to go through the closer gate which I showed you guys in my previous vlogs. Um, gate number 362 which is where the woman's line starts right in front of so that was very close. Um, I ended up going in from gate 302 as you guys can see right here and then once I entered, I turned left to walk all the way to the end of the Sahin. Um, and that was a long walk. And since I was late, I was practically rushing and running. As you guys can see, it was pretty busy and crowded. So originally, the way I had booked my appointment, I kept in mind that I will put the kids to bed as that's around their bedtime and that it would be easier for me to leave. However, that didn't really end up happening because they were jet lagged and plus we came late from Masjid Koba. So they were awake and they were crying. So my husband was trying to put them to bed. Um, I had also thought that I will stay uh, since it's 30 minutes appointments, right? After that, I thought I'll stay to do some ibadat after my appointment since it was our last night in Medina. I would come back before my husband's appointment which he booked around Fajr time so for those reasons I selected the time slot of 9 30 to 10 p.m. I'd also read on a forum that that time slot is not that busy I was genuinely surprised when I got to the masjid because as you can see I'm walking to the left all the way to the end and it is very crowded especially once you get closer to where um, the woman's line is so as I got closer to the line for Riyaz al Jannah appointments I noticed that there is another gate that is pretty close I would say almost in front of the line area and that is the one here i'm going to show you guys so this is the line for uh, the appointments and right in front of it on to the left is gate number 367 and this is also pretty close to um come in and right in front of the line so just keep that in mind unlike me since i was rushing i came through the long way if you want to come closer this is a great gate to enter from so at this point i was basically trying to look for the entrance of the line and it was so crowded the line was so long and everybody was just huddled in I essentially areas. followed the crowd and paid knew attention where the to the gesture of the, of the guards as they were yelling in Arabic. Alhamdulillah, after five to ten minutes, I managed to get into the gated line. One thing I would like to say, though, is that there was a lot of pushing and shoving to get into the line. Many people were holding up their phones, trying to show the guards that they had appointments, but the guards were trying to maintain order. I just want to request the sisters that are watching and planning to come here, inshallah, please refrain from pushing and shoving. There are elderly and kids in this crowd, and you could end up doing more harm than good. I tried 
tried to move with the intention that Allah will lead me and show me the way. And Alhamdulillah, that's exactly how I got into the line. Like one second I was waiting and the next the guard signaled me to go in. So once I entered the line, um, they had put gates on the sides to restrict the areas and create lines. I would see the staff were trying their absolute best to create a system. But unfortunately, a lot of the women were just either not listening or just rushing to get ahead. So please try to respect the system and have respect for the place that you're standing in. Slowly but surely, the line did move forward. And at this point, they had not checked my appointment details yet. And what happened next, I really want to share with you guys what happened to me. I looked ahead and noticed that a few women were being sent out of the line because they were showing them screenshots of the QR code. They wouldn't accept this because theoretically, you could just be using someone else's code to get in, right? They wanted to see the code flashing green, meaning it's active. So at that point, I panicked because I knew I didn't have Wi-Fi and my QR code would not be flashing. But I knew I had an appointment. So I started praying and getting really sad at the same time that I might actually not be able to go in so when i got to the front of the line and the woman was checking my qr code i remember this so vividly i opened up the app to show her but in my mind i was like it wouldn't be flashing but subhanallah subhanallah like when i opened it the code just started flashing green and i started getting notifications on my phone from whatsapp and other um, apps meaning my phone connected to wi-fi somehow and she allowed me in like subhanallah and alhamdulillah that you know like allah just gave me this opportunity to be able to go in and he listened to my dua at that moment because honestly i have no idea how where that wi-fi came from and how it happened but alhamdulillah um so yeah once you get through and you get checked in you see this big board that tells you the instructions on how to um go inside for your appointment and what to do for me this moment was surreal because for a second there i felt like it was impossible and it wasn't going to happen it made me remember all the times that i heard from other peoples that have visited mecca and medina that these lands are truly the lands where the gets accepted instantly sometimes you know and makes you really grateful too um but yeah after we had entered all the women were going to this designated area by the door that they had gated off um as i got closer i noticed that they were making lines and after some time they would slowly let a few lines of the women go in so this is also where they told us to take off our shoes and they had plastic bags to put them in one reason i carried my backpack was so that i could put my shoes in it and not have to worry about having something in my hand at all times because you are human you might put it down somewhere and forget plus it's very crowded once you get inside so you're more likely to leave your shoes somewhere and they will not allow you to go back so make sure to carry a backpack that you can put your shoes in here i noticed again that the staff were trying to you know make this whole process very systematic and proper but some women they were just trying to rush and they started running to go inside like keep in mind we all have appointments and inshallah everyone will get a chance to go inside so please try to avoid doing this try to avoid rushing and running and you know in the process you could end up hurting someone and i think that's more harmful than the good deed that you're trying to do by going into riyadh al -Dana, right um so yeah then they allowed our line to go inside and we slowly started walking in um they were entering through uh, the masjid al nabwi front gate i believe it was gate number 37 that i showed you guys from far and here this is the makkah gate that we're entering in from from this moment onwards it gets a bit chaotic because there are so many women and there was a lot of pushing and shoving to get ahead and i'm not saying this you know to demean anyone or put anyone down i'm just sharing this information in the hopes that people be more mindful in the future to not do such things especially in such a holy place inshallah make space and room for everyone inshallah allah will give you all the opportunity as well you can literally hear the staff member yelling to get everyone to stay in line you know um but yeah here we're walking through masjid al nabwi to get to the riyaz al jannah portion and it was just beautiful mashallah subhanallah <laughs> So at this time, we almost reached the entrance of Riyaz al Jannah. You can see the outer umbrellas of Masjid al Nabwi, and it looks so beautiful. There were tapes that were put up here so that the lines be kept straight. Um, subhanallah, isn't this view just everything? I pray that Allah gives each one of you that is watching this video um, the opportunity to visit here and make your nafal prayers and make your duas. And may he accept all your naked duas as well. Ameen. Um, as we were moving forward towards the entrance, you can see that, you know, a lot of women were kind of ignoring the tapes and they were going under the tapes trying to just go inside. Um, but yeah, again, 
tried to refrain from doing this. So right? what is Riyadh al-Jannah? So the area between the sacred chamber and the pulpit or the member is known as Riyadh al-Jannah. And it's also known as the Garden of Paradise. So it is distinguished by a green carpet and it's also referred to as Radha. So scholars have interpreted this as, you know, the garden is parallel to a garden above it in paradise. Or it is actually in reality a garden of paradise which will be returned to paradise in the hereafter. Or it's like a garden of paradise because of the peace and tranquility that you experience when you're in here. You will notice the entire Masjid al Nabwi is carpeted in red except Riyaz al Jannah. It has green carpet in the complete area. Um, so it is said to do as much nafal as you can here. Make as much dua as you can. Do zikr. This is the most auspicious place in Masjid al Nabwi. Prayers made in this place are never rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make nafal for forgiveness. Make nafal for your health, for your families. Make dua for your hereafter. <laughs> eight notable pillars six of them are located in the radha and two of them are in the sacred chamber which we cannot see so these pillars are believed to mark the exact spots where the original palm tree trunks were that supported the first roof of the mosque these pillars are different from all the other columns in the masjid they have large green circles with a golden wreath around them so i will show you guys the six that you can see in riyaz al jannah and we'll start off with this one here keep in mind pillars are also called ustawana so this is the first one and this is the weeping pillar. On this spot there once used to grow a date palm tree and before the member was made the Prophet ﷺ used to lean on it to deliver khutbah. When the member was made the Prophet peace be upon him used that for the khutbah and then there would come a weeping sound from the tree. The Prophet peace be upon him said that the tree cries because the zikr of Allah used to be near it and now it's far from it. He said that if I did not place my hand on it it would have cried till the day of Qiyamah. And this is the member where the khutbahs were given. And next when you turn, so slowly when I had done my nuffles, I started to move um, in front uh, with the crowd because there was a lot of pushing. So you kind of just automatically move to the front and where you could see um, all the pillars. So when you turn to your right, you can see the other pillars. And this is the pillar of Aisha and that is the pillar of Thoba. I will attach the history of the pillar of Thoba in the description because that is a bit of a longer story. Um, and you'll be better able to understand it by reading it in the description this is the pillar of aisha and the prophet peace be upon him said that this spot is so blessed that if people knew about it they would all flock to this area to offer salah here mashallah like that pillar is so important and then these are the other three pillars that you can see this is the pillar of food which means delegation the prophet peace be upon him used to meet foreign delegations at this place next is the pillar of ali also known as hars which means to watch or to protect this is a place where the companions of the prophet used to sit as a gatekeeper and guard the masjid and house of prophet and lastly we have the pillar of surir which means sleeping place the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to sleep here while making ittikaf. So those are all the pillars that you can see in Riyaz al-Jannah. I will attach the, um, the details in the, his in the description below of the history. And hopefully that will give you guys a little bit more information. And once you spend your 30 minutes here making as much dua and as much nuffles as you can. And making lots and lots of duas and trying to go as close as possible to the pillars as you can. Um, we exited through here. And this was the Al-Nisa gate. And um, there's... There's no specific security or anyone telling you, you know, when to leave. Um, it's just just be mindful of your time, be mindful of your appointment and try to leave during your allotted time. So that other people can get an opportunity to make their duas and nafas. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, this experience was unlike any other. The sukoon that you feel in Riyadh al Jannah is beyond anything that I have ever felt. Plus, knowing the history behind the different areas of Riyadh al Jannah makes it even more special. Next, I'll share with you guys some clips of how the men's appointments look like. <laughs> My 
husband had his appointment near fajr time and you can see their system was more organized and spaced out where each person has space to make their prayers plus they removed the barriers at the front for the men so they can see the mihrab and member properly i also forgot to mention that before leaving riyazuljan or on the way out they did give us a bottle of zamzam water and that was also a really nice touch um, overall, I just want to say my experience was really nice. The only thing to be mentally prepared for is that there is a lot of crowd and it is difficult to pray and offer your nuffle because, especially for the woman, um, people push and sometimes even walk over you. So try to get a spot to the side to make all your prayers. You can then move with the crowd to the front and go close to the pillars afterwards. And please try to be mindful of your time and leave once your slot is over so that other people can get their turn. I pray you all get a chance to come to Riyaz al Jannah and make your prayers to the almighty inshallah i hope you guys found this vlog helpful and can use this information for when you're planning to come visit riyaz al jannah inshallah please do remember me in your prayers i will meet you guys in the next video inshallah take care allah hafiz